the way we try to deal with science in Star Trek is first you try to start with what's scientifically plausible, but then you try to filter that through what looks good for television. 30 years ago, antimatter was the stuff of unbelievable science fiction. But there is one major problem with Star Trek space travel, the G-forces. So the problem with G-forces is that every time Picard says, Engage. He's committing suicide. In fact, the crew would be turned into chunky salsa. You see, when you take off from a stoplight, you go from zero to 60 miles per hour in a few seconds. You get pushed back in your seat. But with the impulse drive, you're going from zero to, say, half the speed of light in a few seconds. And half the speed of light is about 100,000 miles per second. So you'd never survive. Not a future without problems. Which leads back to the fundamental question. Could the Enterprise ever fly? And to the hope contained in 11 atoms of antimatter at CERN. First big problem with antimatter is one of containment. On small scales, that just means it's hard to hold antimatter in a vessel. But on large scales, if antimatter were released from the warp core of the Enterprise, the whole thing could be destroyed in a massive explosion. The problem at the moment is that the Enterprise simply would not fly. I'll say it again. It would never get there. Physics problems include the incredible g-forces needed to accelerate to near light speed, the unimaginable amount of energy that it would take to get there, the need to warp space and time with exotic matter, not to mention the current world shortage of dilithium crystals.